I'm about to do the brakes now on my loco and I'll just explain, explain the layout in a minute before I go any further but just, just before I do that these are the parts for the brakes there's two pages full there's just a couple of a couple of components that are a bit, that are a bit tricky and I'll explain you've got your brake standard not shown on the drawing here is the brake support bracket um, then in that brake standard you've got the brake screw on top of that you've got the handle and then at the bottom of the screw you've got the nut that in turn is connected to this brake arm which is in turn connected to the uh, brake shaft then that operates the pull rod which in turn is connected to the crossbar and then on under that crossbar there's two hangers and on each of them hangers is a brake shoe the tricky components then and that's the, the brake screw and the brake nut now the reason they're tricky because if you're going to do it the, the correct way they've, they've got a square thread on now the brake screw is not a problem because that's an external thread but in the right up here, just above you here it says it's, a, it's an 8 teeth per inch square thread which is a typical prototype practice and it'll be found a very devil to make particularly the nut so if you want to make it easier, alternative, you could go, go by doing it a quarter BSW it will do the job but of course it will not look correct so that, that's the easier way of doing it so I thought I'd have a go at doing it the hard way so I've got to put a square thread on this screw like I said that's not too much of a problem because you're doing an external thread but it's this nut and I'll explain because it's very very small diameter it's only a quarter the, the actual screw is only a quarter diameter so the brake nut core diameter is less than that obviously and I'll just explain how you work the how you work the dimensions out for a square thread here for anybody that doesn't know so <clears throat> I'm doing an 18th per inch the, the old is a quarter so the pitch of the thread obviously is 8 divided into 1 inch which is simple into it's an eighth so 0 0.125 thousandths is the pitch then to get the components of the thread that's the thread and the gap we'll call it it's pitch divided by 2 so you've got uh, the same same amount of material there and there what you're taking out and leaving which divided by 2 is a sixteenth then you've got the depth of the thread which is again pitch divided by 2 P divided by 2 so the thread depth is a sixteenth so you've got a sixteenth deep a sixteenth across and a sixteenth up obviously and so on square thread but when you when you take into account the depth of the thread you're obviously taking the depth out on both sides so that's two one sixteenths which is an eighth that leaves you one eighth in the middle for your core diameter so that's the size of the drill we've got to, which I've got to put up the uh, up the nut to get and get a tool in to cut this thread. So I've been grinding away for the past half hour or so, and I've made this tool here. Now to appreciate the size of this, I've got a fifty pence piece here, and you can see from from that zero on the fifty, it's no bigger than that zero on the fifty. So here's me one eighth drill, which is my core diameter. Here's my blank nut with the nut that I've made, and that's the drill. With its, uh, its re I've, re I've drilled it ready, ready drilled it for doing the thread. So I'm going to set that up in the the chuck now, uh, and that tool then is very very tight up that hole. I've got hardly anything to play with, so I've ground it carefully, ground it to the one eighth diameter. I've took the top down to get my centre height, that from the top, and then I've put clearance in the body of the tool, so that when it enters the hole I've just got enough clearance to come through like that now you don't want to be taking any more off than you need to off your tool because you're losing rigidity and there's not much rigidity as it is if you look at that tool and there's the 50 pence piece so I'm going to move over to Myford then now and we'll have a look at this then and uh, see what's going to happen with this over at Myford now I've got my uh, screw cutting gearbox set to 8 teeth per inch I've put the back gear in to give me my slower speed range because I need to be going really slow for this I've got my tool set at centre right and what's important with your, also with your tool is that you get the uh, body of the tool exactly square and in line with the, with the chuck 
because you've got no room to play with for the traverse of that body. It's got to be exactly parallel with that hole because there's only a few thou clearance. So I've touched my tool on, onto the bow. I've set my dial. So I've got my, I've got my dial test indicator set on the cross slide which is important because I've got limited clearance in that one eighth hole. So when my tool is doing a pass through the hole to do a cut, I've then got to wind the tool off the cut to bring it back. And when I wind it off, because of the backlash in my screw, that, that just that few thousandths is going to affect me. So I've got my, my dial test indicator set. And when that, when that zeroes, I know that my tool is going to come in and out without catching anything. That's eliminating my, my backlash problem. So I'm going to go ahead then and put five thou on to start with, and I'm only going to be taking very small cuts at a time here, only a few thousandths at a time. I'm just going to put four thou on for the first cut, so I'm waiting for me, me dial on my thread indicator. I can engage this on any number because I'm on, the, I'm on an even number thread. Right, I've just got the tool to come through, you probably can't see that. I'm going to wind my indicator back to zero. That way I can now pull my tool back without, without it catching. Right, I'm down to my depth now, 62 thousandths. Uh, I'm just going to take a few spring cuts just to get the spring out of the tool so, so, so I can ensure that the nut is, the thread in the nut is parallel. And then once I've done that, just about three or four spring cuts, uh, I'm going to make the screw to fit the nut. back over on workbench now. I've just polished my thread up and uh, my nuts will lovely fit now on that. So that's the uh, the tricky the tricky items completed on the brakes. Uh, that's over and done with now. I've got to move on to the other parts now and I'll probably do them in another video. There's quite a few other parts to make on this other page as well. So uh, I'm going to sign off for now then. And if you've not seen my other videos, take a look at them. And if not, I'll catch you on my next video. Bye for now then.